foster first um my fossil um my ilp worker um um she came with me to a different approach like she was family like she was some somebody that i could like somebody that i could trust somebody i could talk to somebody that would um didn't just care about the money that they were making because she comes out of her own pocket with her money uh -huh. and um didn't care i mean that sorry <laughs> that she didn't care um she came sorry i lost my train of thought she came to me like she was my mother almost uh -huh. um i'm black african-american um as you can see um a lot of people say that i'm just not gonna make it but i'm standing here today as a 12th grade senior 2.5 which i could have done better in ninth grade um and graduating going to university huh. and i have people by my side with Good. foster services uh -huh. and i'm asking that you will un that you take that you take away the um the foster services from this um proposal uh -huh. not just for me but for generations to come like um the um 2014 2013 uh -huh. 2016 thank you so, okay yeah thank you so much and congratulations on, on how well you're doing yes hello my name is veronica yurizar brown i'm a school based mental health professional and program coordinator in calusa county and i'm really moved by all these youngsters here today i'm but I, I'm sparing you all the little K through third graders here today, but I'm speaking on their behalf because the ME programs um, are all evidence-based programs. They're cost-effective, and I have worked as a mental health clinician and counselor in, in many schools, and I have not come across um, a program that is so phenomenal. And I want, I urge you and encourage you to look at the evidence. There, um, the results we serve, we evaluate everything that we do, and our results clearly indicate that our students also now they perform higher academically. So being able to address their social and emotional concerns in the long run helps their grades. Uh -huh. Thank you for your support for the ME program. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is James Wogan, and I appreciate you staying late today. I'm an administrator and the coordinator of the Mount Diablo Unified Foster Youth Services. First of all, I want to say what an honor and a privilege it is to hear the kids today, the students, speak on their own behalf and how well they've been speaking to you. Um, I've seen many of these, many of our students take a journey from shame to pride to ability to mm -hmm. identify themselves as foster youth and tell their story. Um, so just briefly, um, I'm here in, uh, in opposition to the weighted people formula and I want to ask you to make a motion today to take the foster youth services programs out of the weighted pupil formula. In the changing landscape of the funding for public education and the changing landscape in the delivery of mental health services with the elimination of AB 3632, now is not the time to put foster youth services programs in jeopardy. We have model programs in Mount Diablo. We have a graduation rate of 92% and one of the highest attendance rates of foster youth. And you can see it's because of the relationships that we have with students. So I do ask you to make this motion, and I want to share with you that our school board last night passed a resolution in support of our foster youth program and asking the same thing, that uh -huh. uh, foster youth be protected from elimination. And I'll, I'll leave this uh, resolution here for you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wogan, what, what is the amount of money that, that, is, that you are administrating? I mean, what's the impact? For all of the foster youth program, the total amount is 1.5 million. For Mount Diablo, it's 300,000, uh, a little over 300,000 uh -huh. dollars, and it, and that all goes, uh, you know, it's all service delivery. This is not administrative costs or building. That really is um, tutors, mentors, uh -huh. uh, counselors, people with whom the foster youth have relationships, and really our goal is to see them, see kids, feeling good about themselves, smiling, and doing well in school. Uh -huh. So it's direct services that we provide. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brianna Anderson, and I have, uh -huh. I'm opposed to this uh, issue. Uh -huh. uh, without foster youth services, I can tell you right now, I would not have graduated high school. I would not have the skills nor the confidence to go to college, and I would not be the young lady standing in front of you right now. So thank you. 
Hello, I'm Chloe Walker. I am a youth advocate for foster youth and also a former foster youth of Sacramento County. Um, I attended San Juan Unified School District and Sac City Unified School District. Um, I started my high school education um, as a foster youth and I was in continuation schools. Um, I was able to wean into a mainstream public high school and experience traditional high school with the help of my FYS worker, my foster youth service worker. Um, it was a beneficial program and support for me and a sense they became the mother and father support. Um, coaching me on and motivating me to do well academically. I graduated high school with a 4.0 GPA and honors and continued on with higher education. Um, I'm asking that you remove foster youth services from the weighted pupil formula. They don't need another change. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I, hi, I'm Tiara Williams. I am from Laguna Creek High School. I am a 12th uh, grade student. Please remove foster youth services from the weighted pupil because if we didn't, if, if you guys do it, um, remove them, kids will not um, actually be here. There will be like more foster youth in jail and like on the streets and everything else. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Next. Um, <coughs> hello. Uh, my, my name is James Simpson and uh, I am an America member working with El Grove Foster Youth Services. Um, to give you a, a just brief, um, <clears throat> once I uh, um, I began began in foster youth services uh, as a former foster as a foster youth, I, I entered their school. Uh, <clears throat> I entered the schools with a 1.9 GPA as a junior. So through the help and support of the IOP and everything uh, um, financially with foster youth services, I graduated with over a 3.0 my senior year. Mm. And um, if it wasn't for foster youth services, I would also have been homeless because I graduated 17. And once I got out of the, uh, foster care, I had nowhere else to go. So with the financial stability that they had at that time, I was, uh, I was actually housed. And uh, I'd like to ask you guys to please remove foster youth services from the way the pupil. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Erica Jones. I'm from the Sacramento Unified School District. I'm a junior, and um, without the support services on my high school campus, um, I wouldn't have got tutoring that I needed going in for my freshman through my junior year. Um, I had a 1.9 GPA, and now with the um, support services graduating, I'm almost at a 3.5 GPA. So I would like to ask you guys to please remove the foster youth services from the weight the way people formula. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Hi, my name is Clarinette Kennedy. I'm 16 years old and I'm a junior at Casino Stokes High School in Elk Grove Unified School District. And I feel that the foster youth services have helped so many foster youth in so many ways. For me, um, I went from having all F's to having A's and B's and I currently hold the 3.5 GPA. And I'm just asking that you guys please remove the foster youth services from the weighted um, pupil formula. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, certainly. Um, before the adults start speaking again, but I just wanted to say something uh, to the foster youth that are here as well, and um, just so proud of everybody that has come to testify. And um, I just want to assure everybody that um, we're not going to take foster youth services away. That's right. uh, that is not going to happen um, in this legislature. And I think um, we have. Uh, in a bipartisan way in the legislature have tried very, very hard uh, to protect um, foster youth services, expand foster youth services. Um, there's been a, a body of bills that have happened in my time in the legislature um, uh, extending the emancipation age for foster youth. And I carried a bill personally to make sure that foster youth can stay in their high schools if they get moved from one caregiver to another. I mean, there's been a whole host and body of bills. We recognize that we need to do more um, and we're committed we're committed to that, but I just wanted to uh, rest assured, I'm not sure if we can make motions and so forth mm -hmm. today, but I, I, I want everybody to rest assured that we um, take this very, very seriously and take um, uh, your lives and your success um, very, 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 very seriously, and, mm -hmm. and we are, are committed to you now and committed, committed to 
um, all of your uh, colleagues in the state of California and peers in the state of mm -hmm. California and are very com much committed to not taking these services away, but more committed to doing more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with uh, Assemblymember Brownlee and um, Assemblymember Brownlee chairs the policy committee where this um, issue will continue to be heard. Um, and so as chair of the finance committee myself and with <laughs> Assemblymember Brownlee, uh, we are in hearty agreement. And I think it would be very safe to say that this would be a direction that we would give uh, to the policy committee to really <clears throat> take a very definitive and clear uh, action around protecting the foster youth services as they are in our schools. I think this was an issue and I'm so glad all the foster kids came up today to speak because it was hidden. It was under the radar. It wasn't showing in our reports. It wasn't showing on the graphs as something that would be threatened if the governor's proposal went ahead in the weighted student formula. But yes, indeed, it would actually end up into a pot and, and shared in a way that would, would lose its effective uses in the six districts that receive it. And so uh, it's wonderful program and we would, uh, you know, and someday when we had the funding to see it in every district would certainly be the goal, certainly not to take it away from the districts and the young people that are receiving it now. So I just wanna say to the foster youth who came, your advocacy is very effective because you actually brought something to both of our committee's attention that really had not yet been highlighted. So the fact that you came to Sacramento and said uh, what you did about this program and how important it is, uh, is of great value in us as we move forward and figure out how all of these issues are gonna be settled around the state budget. So thank you for coming. And I know a number of them are out probably still in the hallway. So thank you. All right, thank you. We'll go on with our public comment. Good afternoon, Martha Zaragoza Diaz, representing Californians Together. And I'm not gonna go over all of the points because you've received a letter regarding our concerns. The devil is in the details. Uh, we agree with the problems that were identified by the LAO with regards to the money not following the students generating the additional money, no requirement that schools continue to provide services to our students who are low income or English learners, and the fact that we have a weak accountability system Therefore, it's sort of questionable in terms of whether the accountability system would even be able to handle tracking um, or monitoring that the services are indeed provided. In addition to that, I want to mention that um, part of the student weighted, weighted student formula includes funding of an expanded categorical pro, uh, flexibility program, which would include the economic impact aid. Um, this expanded categorical proposal uh, would uh, the governor stated that the requirements attached to those categorical programs would be eliminated. Uh -huh. um, for English learners, the EIA pays for um, services that are required under federal law that are not instructional uh, in nature, such as identification of students who are English learners and parent advisory committees. And so it, that would be a problematic and we need to uh, find a mechanism in terms of how to deal with that. We believe that the EIA should not be included in the weighted student funding formula because we believe it's already flexible. The only requirement is that it be spent on poor kids and on students who are English learners. Um, and the decision in terms of how to spend it is at the local level. So um, my next comment deals with if the legislature does not approve a weighted student funding formula, we would hope that the legislature also not approve the expanded flexibility program, specifically the inclusion of the EIA. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Next. Samantha Tran with Children Now. Uh, Children Now has been a strong supporter of the state moving in the direction of implementing uh, finance reform, the weighted student formula. I think it's, um, you know, we have a strong belief that we need to rationalize the system, make it more transparent, make it more equitable. Um, we've appreciated the administration's willingness to engage with stakeholders around some of the concerns, because as you've heard today, there are many. And I think the two largest that, um, that we're certainly honing in on is one, um, as we transition to this new finance system, how do we do it in a way that um, doesn't create a, a mechanism for more cuts for districts. And so is there a way to hold districts harmless and, and create that framework? And so I think that's an important part of the conversation. Um, the second piece is, and I think you've heard from a lot of the advocates today, around the concerns about whether or not the students in the schools that are generating these dollars are gonna receive the benefit of those dollars. And um, I think there may be some strategies that you know we can talk about with the legislature and stakeholders, um, primarily around some transparency provisions. We have a current a standardized account code structure that if we did some work on it, we could drive it all the way down to the site level, do some uniform definitions at the state level and have more transparency in the system. And then similar to EIA and, and Title I school-wide 
um, programs, mm -hmm. thinking about some assurances around those dollars. But I think that's a lot of the work that the stakeholders want to do. And I think there's a potential through line on some of this, um, that it's, it's, it's the right direction. We just need to fix some of the issues. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is Tony Morgan, and I'm a representative for local SEIU, and I'm representing um, the classified staff, staff members for our agency. What um, We're here to oppose the weighted pupil formula. What the formula does not state is that how it affects all classified personnel who are the heart and the meat of any agency that's operated in a um, school setting. It also doesn't state um, how it will reduce classroom closure. I mean, it will perform classroom closure, reduce um, <clears throat> downsizing and placement of multiple disabilities. We have some students that who are disabled, and with that being um, implemented, the closure of classroom would have um, com combinations of multiple disabilities, and teachers are not trained in all aspects of the disabilities. Mm -hmm. It also lacks the funds of implementing lesson plans and to provide the up-to-date technologies for students, as well as instructional materials. And in conclusion, it will fail the overall quality of student services. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah Butler. I'm a parent advocate uh, in the district of Aklani Union High School in Contra Costa County. I have a son in high school there and I'm a, what's called the legislative rep for our school um, which is a parents club and on our legislative team. I wanted to come today although you've heard from other people you've heard from the Education <coughs> Coalition two people that I heard earlier and I want to say that I agree with them and agree with their concerns and statements. But I wanted you to hear directly from a parent in a district, we are one that would be losers in this, so I'm opposed to weighted student formula. As you know, there's, there's not more revenue presented with this, this is just re redoing the formula. I'm in complete support of redoing the formula, but we are a district that would be losers, there would be losers and winners. Our district is um, what's called low, low wealth on the funding scale, the revenue limit funding scale of dollars per student. We're near the very bottom of the scale um, in dollars per student in the state. And we haven't had COLA for four years. Um, it would basically just be devastating to our district because it would be a loss. Our business officer figured out over four years it would be a loss of $44 million in compared to what we would get in our current system. Um, so I just want to restate I'm all for um, changing the formula and I um, appreciate uh, Assemblymember Brownlee's bill and hope that you can talk about both things and come up with something that is more fair. This um, I did bring copies um, that I'd like to leave with someone on the effect on our district. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Moira Top on behalf of the California Charter Schools Association Advocates. We are in support of the weighted student formula. We think it is uh, the right time to be having a discussion about, uh, about the inequities that exist throughout the, the state school funding system. Charter schools um, face severe inequities, um, almost $400 per ADA every year. Um, uh, charter school students uh, receive that, that amount less. Um, there are legitimate uh, concerns that have been raised about about the proposal. We think these are things that are worth working through at this point. The uh, superintendents brought up concern about the fact that it's a one size fit all formula, um, and in the Cal in the charter school block grant program today, they are we already differentiate between schools um, of uh, elementary schools, middle schools, and and high schools. That's something that can definitely be worked out in the, in the uh, weighted student formula proposal today, and we think it's worthwhile to do so, so we ask for your support. Thank you. Joshua Golko with the California School Employees Association in opposition to the weighted student formula. In particular, we're concerned about the complete elimination of home to school transportation funding in future years. And we'd also like to express our support for the continued funding of the early mental health initiative. Thank you. Uh -huh. Madam Chair, Eduardo Martinez with Carter Wetch on Associates, and I'm speaking today on behalf of the California State Association of Electrical Workers, the Western States Council of Sheet Metal Workers, and the California State Pipe Trades Council in opposition to the governor's uh, proposal to eliminate categorical funding for apprenticeship programs. Um, obviously, the most folks here in this room are familiar with how successful these programs are, and, and we think those, those dollars are, are very well used and well spent. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members, Christy Valma representing the California Professional Firefighters. 
Uh, the CPF is a joint sponsor with the state fire marshal and a statewide firefighter apprenticeship program. We submitted our letter to the committee about our objections to putting apprenticeship in the way to student formula. We're opposed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Jeremy Smith here on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. I'd like to associate myself with the previous comments about the apprenticeship categorical. Uh, and just remind everybody here that um, apprenticeship is earn while you learn. It leads to productive careers for um, kids, adults who get into them, uh, leads to middle class livelihoods um, and, you know, real living wages. Um, we also care uh, deeply about career technical education and would oppose any um, changes to the weighted student formula, weighted pupil formula that would uh, uh, in any way decrease access to CTE programs uh, for kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience today. My name is Allison Collier, and while I am an employee of a California school district, I am here today as a grandparent of little eight-year-old Keelan. Um, he can't speak for himself today. Okay, I'm getting emotional. Sorry. Stop. <laughs> My family adopted Keelan when he was five years old out of the foster youth program, after the fo out of the foster system. Uh -huh. Needless to say, he has little reason to trust adults. When Keelan started school, he started having problems. Um, didn't get along well with other students, um, tended to be defiant with adults. Last year, based on these issues, he qualified for special education services. The only mental health intervention that he's had this past year is Emmy. Mm -hmm. This year, he's thriving. His grades have gone from below basic to proficient and advanced. In May, he will be exiting special education services. Hmm. Losing this program will cost money and it will cost our children. Uh -huh. I appreciate the motion of this committee today. Uh -huh. um, while <clears throat> I appreciate the governor's office belief that these programs will be maintained and expanded, um, unfortunately, our experience in this state with flexible funding and other programs um, and the um, information from superintendents does not support that belief. So I hope that we are able to continue this extremely valuable program. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, members, thank you for your patience in staying this long. Fred Jones representing the California Business Education Association. I want to associate myself with the labor comments about apprenticeship program, but more globally, career technical education. There's three drivers of our K-12 system. What's required, what's funded, and what's measured. The only thing that's holding some career tech programs in schools today are categorical funding because career tech is outside of the measurement. You had legislation last session to address that issue, last year, in fact, <laughs> because career tech's not part of API. Um, we're outside the mandatory course requirements. We're outside of UCA through G. And so funding is a key element to keeping career technical education programs. We're open to the idea of flexibility, but absent accountability for deliverables, it's really tough for us to trust Sacramento to say, don't worry, we'll flex your dollars and later we'll create an accountability system. We'll help you come up with an accountability system, but we'd like to see them parallel, not check in the mail. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Ash, one of the executive director of the California Agricultural Teachers Association, and I agree with uh, Mr. Jones's uh, observations about the require fund and measure. And I think what you've heard today is that there are wonderful things that happen on school campuses that are not required and not measured, but they're there because they're funded. And, and we certainly have no problem with seeing an accountability um, system evolve to in lockstep with funding. That's a, a far smarter move than, than doing something with the idea or the concept that we'll, we'll try to somehow catch up at some future time with accountability. There are incredible programs, and you've heard about them today for hours, that would simply disappear. 
because they don't have that umbrella of required, funded, or measured. And so we would, in career tech especially, would really like to have a part and parcel of that conversation about how we can do both the funding and the accountability, but we need to do them together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Khadija Alam Javed with the Advancement Project. We believe that the weighted student formula can work, but as long as the funding follows the student to the school site, along with that, we also believe that the weighted funding should be based on enrollment rather than average daily attendance. This will actually help schools that need that extra money to solve their um, attendance issues. And these are the schools that actually need more money rather than less money. Uh, on the categorical programs, we believe some s categoricals should say stay separate and unique, like the Foster Youth Services Program. The Foster Youth Services Program should be funded and implemented in its entirety. And thank you so much for the motion today to hear these issues in the Policy Committee. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Assemblymember Swanson. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you for, for a wonderful hearing. Um, I think that uh, our responsibility and responsibility of the policy committees is going to be to drill down to um, uh, what, is, what is important to the greater good of California mm -hmm. and, and, and not simply handle this as uh, a finance issue, issue. Uh, when it comes to foster care, when it comes to career tech, and apprenticeship programs and mental health services that have been testified to here today, it's important that we understand the added value to our economic growth uh, and also to the individual, uh, the contribution it makes to individual families that absolutely need that help uh, for, for the health and, and growth uh, of their children. And so, uh, so uh, I'm very happy that we're referring uh, this to uh, 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 to uh, policy committee so that so that there can be uh, mm -hmm. a, a thorough discussion. But I hope that we are are going to um, be very thoughtful uh, about this. And it does matter if something is working, mm -hmm. and 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 that hopefully that'll be reflected in the final decision. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank all of our speakers, our presenters, um, and this was a very informative hearing and hopefully very valuable as we move forward and consider this in the future in the policy committee. Thank you very much, and with that, we stand adjourned.